Hi, my name's Justin and I'm a striker with The Creative Match. The Creative Match is a new creative consulting company looking to help individuals and businesses. We're looking for smart, creative individuals that we can help take their ideas to the next level. That is why The Creative Match started this new video series, Not For Dummies. In this series, we're going to take a look at a variety of content and handle it in a quick and concise manner. This week's theme on the Creative Match Facebook page is board games. So we're going to take a look at one of the oldest and best math games ever invented, Backgammon. So buckle up and pay attention as we present the first in the Creative Match's Not For Dummies video series, Backgammon. Thanks for joining us on the Creative Matches, Not the Dummy series on Backgammon. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the setup of the board and what's going on. All right, in the board we've got 24 points. Uh, these triangles are called the points, and we're, we are moving our checkers, our pieces. Uh, the blue team is going to move in this direction, and the yellow team is going to move around in this direction. This would be the yellow team's home, this would be the blue team's home. The point of the game is to get all of your pieces into your home base, and then after you get them home, get them off of the board. Uh, the first team to get all of their pieces off the board is going to win the game. Uh, so we'll find out how we move with dice. Each team has two dice, and they'll roll them out of a cup. The cup just makes the rolls a little more fair. Uh, and we will begin the game uh, with each player rolling one dice. Well, unless they tie. All right, 6-2. So this player, well, I was saying this was my yellow hand, will move one piece 6 and one piece 2. So even though there's two different dice on the beginning roll, you just act like they're both yours. You just take whoever has the highest number takes the roll and begins the game. So uh, how we're going to move in backgammon is each piece has to move a specified number uh, of uh, that the dice shows. So one piece is going to have to move 6 and one piece is going to have to move 2. Now it can be the same piece. One piece can move 6 and one piece can move 2. Now, you can certainly move over places as long as where you land is the number that shows on the dice. So to move six, I could move one, two, three, four, five, six. That's perfectly allowed, and I can go ahead and move this piece two more. What I can't do is I can't move, because the total is eight, I can't move this one, one, two, three, four, and then this one, one, two, three, four. That's not how it works. You have to move the numbers that are actually on the dice, six and the two. There will be occasions in the game where sometimes you may not be able to roll any. Uh, if, if none of these other pieces existed and you rolled just double ones, there's no, there's no way for you to move this piece one, so you would just forfeit those rolls. Uh, speaking of doubles, while we're talking about doubles, if you're to roll doubles, uh, you get to move four times instead of two. So if I was to roll two twos uh, as doubles, uh, I would get to move one two, a second two, a third two, and a fourth two. I can move any, any pieces I want as long as they're able to move. Uh, and not land on a point with more than one of my opposing checkers uh, on it. Now, if there is an, a single opposing checker on a board, let's take a look at that, that's called a blot. Uh, and if the player has a blot on there, that's a weak checker. He's by himself. He has no defense. So if I was to roll a four in this situation, one, two, three, four, or my double two works, one, two, one, two, uh, and hit him, what happens to a blot uh, checker when it's hit is it's going to go up onto the bar. Uh, when a piece is on the bar, it's basically starting its whole trip all over again. No matter where it started from on the board, it's going to have to come back in. So when this player rolled out, he's got a five and a three. Now imagine these pieces, these pips on the inside are one, two, three, four, five, six. So he can either come in on the three or the five. It's going to be the same way when we're rolling off the board. They'll be numbered the same way. We'll just be taking pieces off instead of bringing them on. So this is a powerful move right here to hit somebody that, that has an open blot because you're starting a checker all over again. They have to take another one around the board again. Uh, so that's going to be a, a really offensive way that we can, uh, that we can win the game. Uh, there's a, another object that we should look at that's called a prime. When you build six points in a row, it's called a prime. There's nowhere that this piece can go. One can't get out, two can't get out, three can't get out, four can't get out, five can't get out, and six can't get out. So there's no way for this piece to go anywhere. Uh, if this player was skilled, he would try and roll in and sort of catch, catch the other team so they couldn't move, get their pieces around, sneak these in, and then roll off the board. So let's take a look at this now. 
uh, we have all these pieces, we have all the blue pieces inside of our home board, so we're now able to take them off. So we can roll to take them off, a five and a one. So like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can take off the five, but I don't have a one to take off. So I can move any piece I want, uh, one. It's like moving instead of taking one off. So a four and a six. So I can take off my six, and I could take off a four, but that's gonna leave a shot, right? I leave an open block that if he rolls a five, now he's back in the game, because he can attack my piece, have me hit, and keep me back there infinitely until he wins the game. So instead, I'm gonna hit this one, get the one off the six, and take the second off with four. One, two, three, four. Now he still doesn't have a shot, and I'm still way ahead. Um, all right, so let's go back to a little bit more normal setup and take a look at some other moves. Now, a third piece, when it's on a point, is called a builder. And that makes it a powerful piece because it allows me to build more points without destroying the points I had. Uh, one of the most powerful rules that we can roll in backgammon is a 3-1 if you have a builder here because we can create the five point. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of reason of why the five point is one of the most powerful on the game. I don't know all of the logic behind it, but I do know that that looking to make the five point and what's known as the bar point, essentially the seven point, uh, it's a little bit outside, but you can see if you had set up those, uh, those two points, you'd have a, a, a pretty strong block here uh, to help people go, get out, uh, to block him from getting out. He's going to have to roll some pretty good numbers to get out, out of here. So uh, the game is a mix of offense and defense. Uh, you have to decide at points where, how quickly you want to roll around, uh, how aggressive you want to be, leaving blocks open, or if you want to sit back, you know, form a couple points up here, get hit a few times, save a couple points, and then wait for him to try and roll off, catch some hits, and, and try and get around in the end. Uh, I'll explain to you a little bit about the doubling cube, that funny little cube uh, that's, that has all the uh, exponents of two on it. So, um, the, it's going to start at two. The, if you were playing a match to, say, five or seven, uh, that's when the doubling cube would come into effect. Uh, let's say uh, we were in a game and I felt that I was up, but I wasn't completely sure I was going to win, but I wanted to go ahead and press it, uh, I could offer two to my opponent. Uh, I could double my opponent, and his choices are he can either accept the cube, and now the game we're playing is worth two points instead of one, or he can decline, and we go back, uh, we start the game over, uh, I go ahead and win that game for the one point. Now if he does accept, uh, then he has the cube and only he can double again. So if the game was to switch hands and he takes the lead a little bit, feels like he's got a better advantage, now he can double to four. Uh, and I have to choose whether I want to give him the game for the two points that we're playing for now, or whether I want to take for four, whether I think I can come back and win. Now let's go over a couple different uh, special ways to win the game. Uh, if you were to get all of your pieces off the board before the opposing team takes any pieces off, that's called a gammon, and it's worth two points. So if we were playing a, a, a four-point match, that would make it worth eight. Uh, it's, it's twice whatever the, the number of points we're playing for in that match. Now, the other special uh, circumstance is a backgammon. And a backgammon is when you get all of your pieces off the board... Let's just imagine that all of these pieces were off the board and your opposing team still has a piece in your home board, in your first six uh, points here. So if they still have a piece and you've gotten all your other pieces off, that's a backgammon and it's worth three times uh, the number of points uh, that you're playing for. So if you're just playing for one, it's worth three points, but if you're playing, you know, if we, you're taking a double and cube like we were just saying, uh, we're, we're up to 12 points there. So that's the most powerful way to win the game. Uh, so... Uh, it's a game of uh, strategy. It's offense and defense. It's math. It's a great game for kids as they uh, as they learn to play the game. Uh, they'll begin to see the board in numbers. Uh, let's roll for yellow uh, in five. We don't even have to count five anymore. We know that the board is in denominations of six, so we can move from the end point to the one just before it, uh, and we can do the same right here. So that was four fives. Uh, you begin to see the board in math very quickly. Uh, it's a great game. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to write us at The Creative Match. This has been The Creative Match, not for dummies.